Just as I can't believe that there was a creator, I can't believe that this all happened by chance, which implies there was a creator. So you see, I'm, I'm in a completely uh, hopeless uh, uh, bind, and I've stayed there. Again, I find it hard to believe that this is all a matter of atoms and molecules. And so I try to fit into my concept of the world uh, the uh, conclusion that there is a larger force of some kind, which we can call God, or you can call it whatever. And I, and I, but I can't accept that. I'm uh, what's called a materialist in philosophy. I believe in, that doesn't mean I like Cadillacs and big cars. My students always used to think that. It means that I believe the world consists entirely of material substances. And when you specify those substances, the atoms and molecules, and the laws by which they interact, you've done it all. There isn't anything more to, to be said or inserted into your model of the universe. And that's what my science tells me, and I'm, you know, I've been a scientist all my life. Um, but I find it unsatisfactory. In fact, it makes me uneasy. I feel I'm missing something, but it will not, uh, I will not find out what I'm missing uh, within my lifetime. If you uh, reverse the motion, the outward motions of the galaxies, and go backward in time, they come closer and closer together, and you reach a point finally where they're nearly infinite in density and temperature, and, and farther than that you can't go, so there's a beginning, there's a, a, a point in time from which it all started. And that's a remarkable thing because it has a very strong theological flavor to it. And that intrigued me because I am a, uh, an agnostic. And uh, if there was a beginning, a moment of creation in the universe, then there was a creator. And a creator is not, a, not compatible with agnosticism. And I thought that, I found that message so interesting that I, I felt a strong compulsion to share it with others. And so that's why I wrote that book.